Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this particular screencast is going to be discussing two factors which is the centre of mass and stability. The centre of mass is important to us as biomechanists as it shows us where weight will act from on a body, so an object or a person. And if we were defining what a centre of mass is, it's the point of which a body is balanced in all directions. So if we're looking at the image that is on the screen, where that sort of crosshair is, the little blue crosshair is, is the point roughly where the whole body that you are presented with is balanced in terms of its weight. If we look at different sporting images, we can also try to put a point, like a crosshair, on where the body is balanced in all directions. So if we're looking at this image now, it may be because the athlete's leaning forward slightly, so a lot more mass is coming forward, the centre of mass for that athlete would be somewhere around about there, instead of where it was on our original diagram on the previous slide where I was just standing straight. So if I lower my body mass, the centre of mass might move. Similarly, if you are a gymnast and you raise your arms, or you stand on tiptoes and raise our arms, the centre of mass will also move. It's not likely to be in the middle of the belly button anymore, the nasal area. It might move upwards because as the arms move upwards, the weight and the mass comes with it, and so therefore it slightly raises that centre of mass. If we look at divers, for example, when they outstretch their limbs and lean forwards, the centre of mass actually becomes outside of their body. So the point in which the body is balanced in all directions is now somewhere around about there in terms of where the weight is proportionate. This is really effective for divers and gymnasts because it allows them to rotate much more easily around a given axis. And so by reaching forward and touching their toes, they can manipulate or move the center of mass to their preference. In the exam, you may be asked about specifically the high jump and how the center of mass changes during a high jump technique. And over time, there is a specific technique that has arisen for the high jump and it's called the Fosbury flop. So it's a certain jumping technique that's used to get over the bar. The way in which the center of mass changes for a high jumper is through the following, and you're going to need to make small notes on each particular bullet point here. To start with, the athlete will have what we call a J-curve run-up. I'm going to show you a picture of that in a minute. That is specifically designed so that the next part of the process can change the center of mass. So the run-up isn't just running straight towards the, uh, the high jump pole and jumping straight over. The run-up is what we call a J-curve. It slightly bends in the run-up and it allows us to manipulate the center of mass. How it does that is because if I run up in a, in a curved manner, it allows me to plant my outside foot which gives me the opportunity to raise my inside leg and at the same time raise my arms up. And if you remember the picture from the gymnast that we've already seen, if I raise my arms and raise my legs, it means the center of mass will come up as well. And that makes it easier for me to go upwards if the center of mass is higher. As I then am in midair, I will twist and lean back and arch my spine backwards and extend it. And by doing that, we then become almost like the diver that I mentioned earlier on. And the center of mass will then slightly move underneath my spine, because as I'm leaning back, 
and therefore eventually the center of mass might even pass underneath the bar which allows me to clear the bar so the exam questions that target high jump and center of mass you will need these four particular bullet points and be able to understand how they're applied as promised here is the picture if you're looking top down of a j-curve run-up you can see they start to run straight and then they curve slightly left in towards the high jump and that is a traditional j-curve run-up they're not running just straight with the final point about the center of mass going beneath the bar this is what we're talking about so as the athlete curves their body backwards deliberately if you then had to put a spot on this picture now where the center of mass is it would be around about there maybe slightly higher because the weight is then balanced in that picture at that point and that makes it easier for the athlete to cross over that bar without clipping it the second factor we're talking about in this screencast is what we call stability stability is the ability of a, a body so a person or an object to resist motion and to remain at rest it is also the ability of an object or a body to withstand a force so something could push against it and it could remain stable or it could take that force and return back to its original position something would be much more stable if it could do that we have four factors that affect how stable a body can be first of all mass thinking logically the heavier a body is so the heavier an object is the heavier a person are the harder they are to move they are going to be much more stable because of the weight height of center of mass is factor two if I stand on my tiptoes on one leg and raise my arms I'm going to be far more unstable and easier to push over than if I get on all fours and spread my body weight and lower the center of mass towards the ground so if I can reduce the center of mass or lower it down I am going to be much more stable than if I raise the center of mass so that's what we mean by height the line of gravity is an imaginary vertical line that runs downwards through the center of a person or an object or a body if we can move the line of gravity within the base of support and we'll talk about base of support in a second we will be much more stable the final factor linking to the line of gravity is the base of support put simply the more contact points you have with the ground the better your base of support and therefore you'll be much more stable for example if I'm on all fours hands and knees and feet on the floor effectively I'll be much more stable than if I'm on one tiptoe because I've got much bigger base of support going back to the line of gravity if I'm standing upright with two feet firmly on the ground my line of gravity goes straight down to the ground from through the middle of me and it runs between my two legs I'm fairly stable okay because the line of gravity is in between my two legs that are, that are touching the floor however if I'm on all fours on the ground my line of gravity is therefore between all four base of support point contacts and I'll be even more stable than that so the line of gravity is closer to the ground and it's in between the base of support what is going to happen now on this powerpoint is there's going to be three images of a hundred meter sprinter and what I'd like you to do in your notes is tell me using each picture 
how does the athlete maximize the factors affecting stability in each picture? Okay, so the four things that I've got on this screen, so mass, height of center of mass, line of gravity, and the basis support, you need to apply to each picture. What is happening to each of those things in each picture? And that tells us what is happening to the 100 meter runner and how they are affecting their stability. For example, here is picture one. You might start by saying, well, the base of support is pretty good. He's got two hands on the floor, one knee on the floor, and also both of his feet are in the blocks. So that's five points of contact on the floor for his base of support, making him very stable at this point. You then make a note about line of gravity. You then make a note about height of center of mass. You then make a note about mass. And that effectively summarizes his stability for that position. That's picture one. Do exactly the same for the other two pictures. Here is picture two. So at this point, this is the get set position. So they've, they've moved their hips upwards. And picture three would be the athlete moving out of the blocks at great speed. So it's that point where they leave the blocks. So again, go through your factors for each picture and make notes on that. Once you finish that, I have one more question left to ask you, and that is this. How would any athlete benefit from being unstable? And the pictures I want you to think about that question are as follows. In football, a goalkeeper making a save, just at this point here, they've deliberately become unstable. How has that given them any sort of advantage? Right, you might want to link it back to the factors. You might want to just make a statement. And think about slalom skiers. At this point, extremely unstable. Why is that? Again, relate to your factors. What's the purpose of doing that? Does it give them an advantage of being that unstable? All right. Thanks for watching this little screencast on center of mass and stability. And again, if you need any more biomechanics support, please head to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.